Main Street, Superior, Arizona. Mining is the backbone of this town. This is the spot where it all began more than 100 years ago. Green stains from leaching copper still visible. The magma mine shut down in 1996 when most believed all the copper had been taken from the ground. But the geologists at that time <clears throat> had um, an inkling that there was a large deposit uh, much deeper. They were right. A 10-minute drive takes us to this boulder field where lurking 7,000 feet below the surface is one of the largest copper ore deposits in the world, as large as nearby Pickett Mountain to give you an idea. Those red rigs, they've extracted tons of core samples to map out the future mine, all cataloged and stored in this huge warehouse. This is a, a massive sulfide vein with pyrite and calcite. And the calcite is about 80 uh, percent, weight percent copper. Rich copper deposits, but to mine it, they will have to tunnel beneath it at an enormous cost. We've been at it for 10 years. We've invested about 1.2 billion dollars. There'll probably be another billion dollars invested over the next five to six years before we launch. Is that going to fit? Should. After a safety briefing, we climb into diggers, boots, hard hat, headlamp, safety harness. Andy Bravens, mine superintendent, gears me up. We tag in. This tells them who's down in the mine in case anything goes wrong. As we walk out, steam is billowing from the old number nine mine, which now serves as the ventilation shaft for the number 10 mine, the one we're riding down. We're going to travel at about 500 feet a minute. It should take us a little over 15 minutes to get to the bottom. Randy Seppala is the project manager. He will guide us. Suspended from this massive A-frame is the six by four foot cage that will drop us more than a mile down below the Earth's surface. The deepest single lift shaft in, in uh, the United States is, was built right here. Our descent guided from the hoist control room. <laughs> Our only view is through these golf ball sized holes in the cage. The sun and sky slowly fade from view as we descend into the darkness, the cage rattles and hums. We're going 500 feet a minute right now. Our headlamps provide the only source of light. I hear the fans coming up, so we're close to 3,500 feet deep. Fans pump super cooled air into the mine, but the deeper we go, the hotter it gets because the rocks still carry the heat from the Earth's molten core. Miners call it the devil's hand. We're at about uh, 5,600 feet below the surface. It's starting to get very humid, much warmer, and uh, it's just a musty, damp smell. We will travel nearly 7,000 feet down, the equivalent of five Empire State buildings stacked on top of one another. As we near the bottom, the environment suddenly changes. The humidity is stifling in this zone right here. It's like you're in a steam room, in a sauna. When they sunk this shaft, they hit a huge aquifer. Think of it as water trapped in rock like a sponge. All right, now it's like a rainforest in here. As we leave the cage, we walk into a bizarre underground downpour. Yeah, this water is really hot. This is a real deep aquifer. Uh, it's got uh, producing about 550 to 600 gallons a minute. Uh, water that's about 175 degrees. Miners had no idea the water was here. It shut down the project for almost a year while they figured out how to keep the mine from flooding. They installed two huge pumps and tons of pipe to get the water out. They send it out to nearby farms at no charge. But the water keeps coming. The deeper we went, the hotter it got, and the more water we got, and it was a struggle. In the middle of the downpour is this island, the dry room that controls the pumps, air conditioning, and power. Before it was all built, miners could only work about two hours at a time due to the intense heat. All right, so the working conditions down here would be untenable. They're sucking the hot air out out of this huge vent, and the cold air is coming down right here. And without this, the temperature in here would rise to 170 degrees. One of the things that strikes you is how roomy it is at the bottom. They dug this 16 by 16 feet, much larger than the old 10 by 10 shafts, and they lined it with fast drying concrete. 
After about an hour, we leave the bottom and go up several thousand feet to what's called the Never Sweat Tunnel. Resolution Copper has invested six years in just getting to this point, but it will be another 10 before they begin taking ore out of here. Is it still a dangerous job? Oh yeah, it's, it's inherently it's hazardous. So it's our job to uh, engineer those hazards out and make the place uh, safe for the guys to work. After two hours in the mine, it's time to head out. We climb into the cage one last time and make our ascent. Suddenly we can see light dancing off the concrete walls. And then finally, sunlight, blue sky, and fresh air. There's nothing like hitting the surface and smelling the good fresh air. And Sepala says being part of the team that sunk this mine is his proudest achievement. This mine will be here for a long time. You wouldn't do anything else, would you? I wouldn't do nothing else. I'm almost done, but I wouldn't do anything else.